Hi everybody, it's Tim again. Uh, somebody had asked me about what kind of probe I use on my uh, signal tracer here, the one that I worked on. I don't know if I had mentioned it at one point, but I did some of the upgrades to it where, it, for me, it worked better. And basically I put a, a double pull, double throat switch in it so that I could have it either using it as a signal injector or throw it the other way and it was a signal tracer. Uh, because I was getting some noise and I thought well I'm never probably going to use them both at the same time and anyhow for the injector I usually use a uh, a function generator so that I can control the frequency I mean this would work fine for, for doing that in uh, other circumstances but uh, you know if I'm say working on a radio and I want to put a thousand hertz signal into a uh, into a microphone input I will hook it to the signal generator and, and do that and I can adjust specifically what I want. But uh, you know this would probably work fine for that too, I'm just not used to it. But anyhow, one of the things I thought of was when I was working on a little radio here that somebody had dropped off and it's a uh, it's an old realistic Archer jet stream. Uh, but when I had it, I thought, well, you know what, maybe I'll use this and just go through it and see if it's working. So one of the things I, I wanted to demonstrate was I had two different types of probes that I use. And the one's just basically these. You know, the kind of the generic probe with the BNC and these type or alligator, you know, moving that, these type of probe or uh, connectors or alligator probes on the, yeah, alligator clamp connectors on the end. So I'll plug it in here onto this and we'll turn this on to input. Turn it up. I don't know if you can hear the, the little bit of noise but so for battery operated radio not a problem. I just have to find something that I can use as a uh, alligator clip. It just so happens to be an alligator clip I have here. So the negative lead I'll attach to the negative terminal of the battery. I can do that right there like so. And I'll clip the negative lead onto the black lead here. And then I can take this red lead and just kind of use it as a probe. Now I'll make sure the radio is turned on. And as you can hear, I don't hear a signal. So without, there is a schematic for this, but it's basically an eye test. But at least it's something. This was back in the days when they gave you something. Uh, but without something like that, hey, does it even work? So, you know, you could tromp around with a voltmeter and look for a battery voltage and everything, but uh, the funny thing was is I found this rather quickly without without anything, just by looking at it, but uh, I d induced the same problem to just go through this again. So anyhow, I turned the radio on, I have the volume all the way up, and then with this, I'm just going to kind of go in and probe, even just, just touch on just about anything, and I'll zoom in and show you what I mean, and you'll start to hear, and at the same time, I'm going to be moving the uh, the frequency dial, you know the tuning dial. So let me zoom in and I'll show you what happens while I'm probing there. Get a better view. Now it might be a little bit dark but you're going to see when I turn on my light how it, has, uh, how it affects this tracer. So it's not too bad but when I get near it I'm on the antenna so I'll kind of try and keep it uh, keep it down, and I'll turn this so you can. I'm I'm watching in the monitor to do this, so it might be a little bit tough, but I want to be be sure that I don't move out of the monitor. Oh, yeah, there we go. That was good. Well, I just tested the battery clips. They're welded in well, or soldered in well. So let me raise this a little bit and. I'll just kind of probe around here a little bit with this. See, I'm here. Can you hear noise? So that's telling me the battery's working, probably. Uh, but as you can see, I'm not really touching anything in particular, even the tops of capacitors. So I'll just I want to try and tune it while I'm doing this. And keep this the tuning knobs right here where my thumb is. So I'm going to be doing one back and forth. So, again, like I said, this is just without anything, without any schematics or anything, just seeing 
what's going on. Uh, I can't hear anything on the on the monitor there. Yeah, maybe if I turned it on, it would work better. Okay, now it's turned on. Now let's see. So that was the check. It showed me that the monitor was working, or that the uh, tester wasn't showing me anything false. Well, there we go. We hear noise as soon as I clip it on. So I just kind of turn this. There. Okay, I could hear something. Let's see if you can hear it. I'll move the microphone or the. So, so what I'm gleaning from this right now is A, the battery and the switch and everything works okay. Probably the tuning capacitor, this guy here, and the local oscillator and everything's working because I can turn it off and on frequency. Can't tell if I can get others. Oh, there's something else. So that's all working. But I'm not hearing anything else. So right now I know that it's definitely something in the audio section because I'm not hearing anything else. So I'll go down here closer to the speaker and just probe around on things. There we go. As you see, that's just the top of a capacitor. I mean, it's, it's nothing. And even the back of the speaker, I'm still picking something up. So... Basically, I know that speaker may, may be the problem. The amplifier seems to be working. Oh, that's pretty loud. Uh, we'll check it out. So everything up to the volume, everything's working. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the jack for the uh, for the earphone. And it's there's can't you can't really see there's power there. What I had found here was the jack was a little bit bent. So I straightened it out. What I did here is I put this little piece of plastic in there to simulate the jack being bent and not working. So I had, I had the same kind of troubleshooting technique that I went before, except this time I actually used a tool instead of just visually looking at it. So I'll show you real quick. I'll show you a different type of uh, probe that I use for different things. But to tell you the truth, this, this kind of works just fine. and It's cheap. It's, it was there. It, I, I use it for my frequency counters or voltmeters or anything. So the other one I made, and let me back out so you can see what it is. It's just a piece of uh, coax cable, 50 ohm coax cable. It's uh, I forget what it is. It's it took the place of eight, uh, the RG8, but it, it's a little too rigid, and I don't particularly like it because of that. At least for this. You may have a condition where you want something a little more rigid than this, but as you can see, it holds its position. Uh, so what I do is I'll plug this in its place, and all I have on the end, I have a uh, PL259 connector and then an adapter to BNC. So I'll plug this in its place. Now with this one, I didn't put a ground wire on because I was using it for different things. So I usually just plug the, I just attach the uh, clip right here because that's where the shield ends right there for the ground wire. And then I have this little bit sticking on. And again, I think we're going to find the same kind of system we have. Uh, see, it, it's doing the same, the same deal. Uh, maybe if I was up in the RF range uh, as opposed to the audio range, I might find this more more useful than than the other probes, but this doesn't have an it doesn't have an RF probe with it or anything. So uh, whatever works for you, basically. But this will again, like I said, this will do the same thing. You can get in here and sniff around. Now the nice thing about using this. The nice thing about using this tool for a transistor radio is you can take it and pretty much go in there and do that. You can hit on just about anything in the radio and not have any issues whatsoever. Uh, 
you don't want to try something like that with a with, with a uh, vacuum tube device. The voltages are considerably higher, and you know you may be standing here holding this, and it'll be all black and crispy when you're done. But uh, you know, or, or burn the probes up, or electrocute yourself, because the voltages are considerably higher. So when I do use this, and I ha I did use this actually on the Holocrafters, before I stick it on anything, I take the voltmeter here. And I make sure that I don't have any outrageously high voltages, uh, and, and then and then I'm good to go. This again, like I said, you're not gonna you're not gonna run into those outrageously high voltages. Even if it was something that plugged into the wall, or something 110, I would still check it before I went and stuck my probe anywhere because uh, it's, this is not meant to withstand something like that. And in some cases, neither is a human body. But anyhow, so. Uh, I think it was Ken, uh, if that answers your question, what did I use for a probe? Uh, like, this just happened to be what I had, so this is what I used. Uh, I did make other probes, but for what I, for what I, I'm doing here, it's not a whole lot, not a whole lot of difference. So it's whatever you have laying around, I think. So thanks for watching, and I hope that answers some questions.